Now on the stage, we have Baylor head coach Dave Aranda. Again, we'll start with an opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Coach? So humbled uh, to be here with you guys. Um, way appreciative. I know Mac Rhodes is, uh, is somewhere here and Javon Overshown from um, our athletic department. So appreciative of their support. Um, but it's, it's always good to be with you guys. You know, I, I, I wanted to start this with really hard lessons from last year. I, I have to imagine for um, those of you so inclined, you know, what, what happened last year. And, uh, you know, I just, it's, it's one of the, the beautiful things of our, about our sport is that the uh, personal comes out in the professional. And, um, you know, the, the faults of just me can, can um, you know, that it can happen there too, right? The, not only the positive things, but the negative things. And I look at, you know, the last year trying to save people, maybe trying to change people and um, not having hard enough boundaries. And, um, you know, I look at the, I don't know if it was a hubris or what it was that made me think that I could, uh, but I think people are ready to change or improve when they're ready to, um, when they're ready to do it on their own. Uh, so I think that was, a, that was a big factor last year. And I think the other was, you know, not using the transfer portal and not embracing it. I think, you know, one of the struggles for me has always been if you say yes to something, uh, a player outside of your team, that's in the portal. You're saying no to a player on your team, you know, uh, that maybe is struggling from an injury. That's maybe that's maybe trying to get, you know, his class, his his schoolwork in order. That's maybe trying to fine hone the techniques of of this um, new position that he's playing, or maybe he's trying to gain weight, or or any of those things. I think that when you bring somebody in, you almost really kind of stunt the growth of that of that person. And I think for me to kind of come to grips with, um, hey, this is what needs to happen for the betterment of the team, as opposed to just looking at what's best for that one particular player on your team. And I think we all look, we all like to think that, you know, there's going to be just a trajectory of taking off like a rocket ship. But I think we all know that there's, there's the, the, the bumps and the, the, the pits and, and the, the downward arcing um, in any type of career or a young person's career. And so to say that, hey, we still got you, we still believe in you, but this is what we need to do for the team right now has been an area of growth for me. You know, to take it to this year, you know, to start the year really started with person over player and um, really focusing in on that and talking uh, a lot about that with our team. And, you know, and starting that with like, hey, we're talking about the, the whole thing, you know, your body, your mind, your heart and your soul is to get that into a, an alignment and to get that to where, you know, you know yourself, you can be yourself, you can express yourself. And when it comes time to, you can check yourself. You know, I think to see that, that, that our young people today aren't just a cog in a machine, right, to um, get wins and take home revenue, but are human beings fully formed by God. Right. And when we say know yourself, know that, as Paul would say, hidden in Christ with God and that you can express yourself. So like the sport can be that for you. You can express who you are and much like an artist does is um, have a have a, a signature that's all your own. You know, the the check yourself part comes, I think, is a huge part of person over player to me because, you know, the you're in, you're, you're growing, your, your self-awareness is improving, right? It's not, the self-awareness for us is not so much whether something's right or wrong, but is, is this helpful or is this not? You know, yesterday I felt kind of begrudgingly for this, uh, with this person. And I don't want to feel, I know what that feels like now. I don't want to feel like that anymore. So the next time I'm in that situation, I'm going to do this differently or I'm going to be better with it. And then you work at it and then you're you're growing and getting better. And so I, I just think that these things are way important things and um, we spend time with it. 
you know, ex uh, excited with our new coaches and new staff members coming on board. I think they've brought great energy and a uh, great connection to our young people and just really feel a uh, um, uh, one team, one vision, um, and I, I feel I feel that uh, connectedness. You know, we've brought in a fair amount of new players, and the new players have been great fits on the field and off the field. And and, and am excited to be able to see them uh, express themselves and go on just this journey, self discovery through the season, man. And really, um, and really, and and really show up when it matters most. I know that's why they came here. Excited for the eight home games and excited for our schedule. Uh, way appreciative of it. And I'm looking forward to playing our best ball when we're at home. You know, McLean Stadium is very special when, um, you know, a team has earned the right for folks to come in and watch. And we're, we're totally aiming to do that. And so with that, um, wanted to open it up with questions for you all. All right, we'll go to center right, four for up. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib, uh, Dave, good to see you. Uh, first of all, I just really wanted to say, uh, maybe on behalf of the media, uh, offer my condolences on the passing of your father. Sorry that that uh, happened, sorry to bring it up. I wondered if you would just reflect on maybe his influence on you as a man and a coach. No, I appreciate that. I went and saw my dad when I first heard that he had cancer. And um, my dad and I have always have, it's always been a great relationship. I was never really someone that would say openly, I love you. And I always knew that he did though. And so um, I remember when he called me and told me that he had pancreatic cancer and it was stage four. I told him that I loved him, and uh, he didn't say it back. I don't know if he heard me. or. And so I wanted to go and say it to him face to face, and so um, I was able to do that. And he gave me a big hug, you know, and um, I don't know, when you're hugging and everything, you feel like, hey, this is a good hug, and, I'm a, and he wouldn't let me go, you know, and he kept really strong. And he told me that he loved me. And I'm so glad that we had that moment because I know a lot of folks don't have that. And um, yeah, I just, you know, I just, I'm, my, uh, we're gonna have a celebration of his life coming up on this Sunday. And there's gonna be just so many people that are gonna be there that my dad touched. And, um, you know, family members that didn't know they were a part of the family, relatives that needed help and my dad was there for, and just all these things and just way proud you know, to be a son. So I appreciate that. Go to uh, center right. Dave, uh, Joe Goodman from the Bear Den and Our Daily Bears. Uh, in the three seasons that you've been a head coach, you've had wildly different circumstances and results, uh, different coaching staffs. What would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned about yourself compared to year one now going into year four? Appreciate that question. I, there, there's a lot, um, a lot that I've learned. Um, you know, I think the best way I can answer your question is that every piece of you, um, every part of you, has to um, to know why why you're doing this. Like, what's the reason behind this? What's the? Um, I think we all can see what the the short term goals are. But what's really the long-term goal? You know, what's the legacy you want to leave? You know, what's the uh, what's the reason? What, why are you doing this? I think if those things aren't worked out, then your heart can be a mercenary heart, uh, like C.S. Lewis has talked about. And you know, you just go to the highest bidder and whatever it takes. You know, and so I think to to really know like who you are. And that takes a lot of work because there's plenty of hiding spots. And so to really know who you are and to, um, to be able to express you, you know, it's way cool, man. We're trying to get some of our, a lot of our team to do that. And I think it's, um, you know, of all the things that we're doing, I'm most excited about that. And so I appreciate the question. 
We'll stay center right in the back. Dave Parker Ream, Fox 44, right over here in the center. Okay. Back here. Yep. Uh, you mentioned the growth kind of as an individual, but not only as an individual with the team uh, this year, especially with the new coaches and stuff like that. You come into this season a little bit different expectations than last year. How do you approach that with the new culture you guys are kind of trying to establish getting back to that mountaintop? Appreciate the question. I think, you know, I look at like today as a great example for that. I, you know, our guys are lifting today. Um, now that we've got five guys that are here with us today that aren't lifting. And so I think of the guys that are lifting today and, and, it, and what it needs to be is like, hey, here's a, here's a day for us to get better. Uh, hey, this was the, um, this was Monday. This is the last time we lifted. This is what it was. We're gonna get better today. All right, it doesn't matter who's not here or, or who is here. Uh, we're going to attack this. And, um, you know, we're not looking for, hey, you know, the last week of, uh, of July is going to be a we got a couple days there to kind of relax before the seat. We're not looking at that. We're looking at like today, the eight o'clock workout, you know, the, the 10 o'clock workout. And I think like those things um, to for a, an individual player, to look at that as, um, you know, there can be a level of mastery, man, that I can have, and it and it takes me being fully present. Um, you know, those are the things that are going to carry over to the season, when there's adversity, um, when the game didn't start the way we wanted, when the halftime score isn't what we want. I think those things don't come, um, come on a wish and a prayer in those moments. I think those things are developed. And those things have grown. And uh, I'm proud of our group for working on those things. And so I think for us to continue uh, to try to win the day will, uh, will, will help us when those, when those storms come. We'll go to far left in the middle. Joe Cook with the Inside Texas. Baylor and Texas have been in the same conference for over a century. Baylor is the only school who have been in both the Southwest Conference and the Big 12 who gets to host Texas this year. You talked about how important winning at McLean is. Do you expect to have a different environment when the Longhorns may make their last trip ever to Waco? Appreciate the question. Um, have, um, have a great respect uh, for Texas football, for their history, and uh, for Coach Sark and what he's building and how he's recruiting and uh, their style of play. I, you know, they're right on the forefront offensively and defensively. Um, of uh, being creative and innovative and uh, a lot of their players I know about and am, am expecting uh, a battle and you know a lot of it is we, we need to bring that battle to them and so you know um, I think anything less with Baylor Texas um, is is not enough and so and, and anticipating um, a great game there and appreciative of the opportunity We'll go to the far right, back row. Hi, Dave. Alex Walker with Channel 9 in Orlando. You touched on your schedule. I want to get your thoughts on UCF joining the conference and your road trip to Central Florida in September. I know you had a little experience with UCF when you were at LSU and that Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> no, appreciate the question. Yeah, you know, a lot of respect for UCF and um, just the, the, the talent on the team. Um, you know, the way that they play, um, you know, defensively, I know there's a, there's, there's a, a fire and a great temperament. And then offensively, there's explosiveness and everything there. I've got so much respect for Coach uh, Malzahn. I, you know, just the, the person that he is and, you know, the, the, the thinker in football that he is. And so have gone up against him uh, a bunch and uh, know how formidable he is. And um, he just makes, for us, just a tough league even tougher and uh, better, you know. And so I think for us to go there and for it to be, I want to say it's their first, their first Big 12 game, I just think it's going to be a tough environment. It's going to take everything with us, and we're aiming to, we're aiming to bring everything. Well, that's center, third row. Sean Gerard, CBS Sports. How are you doing, Coach? Good. Uh, you know, so obviously you made a defensive coordinator change this offseason. So first of all, what kind of made you want to bring Coach Ballage back onto your staff? And the other part of it, too, is 
what priority was it to also get somebody with a secondary background uh, with some of the issues you guys had there last year? No, appreciate that. Yeah, Coach Pallage is, um, is, a, is a coach that players can relate to, is a coach that um, can be real in the in-between moments, you know? I think the, you know, so much can be learned when, um, you know, if you're watching an interaction between a coach and players, it's not so much during the time a coach is talking to the players. It would be the coach talking to a player and the coach walks off. And if you keep your, your, your vision on those players, like what is their reaction, right? Is it kind of a shoulder thing or is it kind of a rolling of the eyes or is it a joke afterwards or what is it, you know? And so I just think, you know, there's just so many, I think today is a great example of just all the, the, um, the pub and everything. There's all these opportunities for people to put on whatever kind of face they want to put on and whatever role, if they chose to play whatever role, you know, to play, but to find people that are real and, 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 and authentic and, you know, comfortable with who they are, don't have to be anybody else. I mean, I think players, I know players see that, see that. I know it. And I know that they connect with that. And I think Palich has that, you know. And so uh, impressed by him. And, then, you know, the football stuff, I think, is way strong. I mean, he's coming from, you know, the, what, the Utah State, Wisconsin, LSU, the Alabama, the Georgia, the Oregon. There's two really good schools of thought. It's a lot of similarities, some differences. And so way cool um, kind of menu to kind of choose from. And so I just think that, uh, you know, um, he's a special one. As far as the secondary goes, I think the, the ability to get someone that can really kind of, um, you know, um, see the whole field, see it from the, the back to the front, relate to, relate to all of our people, or way strong requirements for it. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he uh, hits it out the park on all those. Yeah, thank you. We'll have time for one final question. We'll go to the far left, middle. Hi, Coach. John hey. Sartori from NBC6 in Shreveport. I was just wondering what steps you see Blake shape in making this season and how important his success is for the success of your team in 2023. No, I appreciate that. Uh, very proud of Blake. I, you know, to, um, you know, I've... I feel like I've I've felt some of the same things. I have to imagine a lot of you guys have of of um you know you you step into an opportunity and you just it's clicking and you're rolling and um it's not a thought of man it's this easy but it's like hey this is pretty good. And then um to go upon hard times and to see maybe that there's blind spots the whole time that you didn't even know and then to address those things and to come out stronger because of it. That's such a cool story. And to come out of it with like a pure heart, you know, uh, not like, you know, I'm gonna prove to you or I'm gonna show you or, you know, this to you or whatever, um, to not chase approval, but to really work for improvement, just way cool. And so a big fan of his, I th you know, the team sees that, the guys see that, and they wanna work hard for him and, um, you know, his growth uh, off the field uh, as a leader and just in terms of just doing all the things has been really good to see. And so I'm expecting big things. I know he is too. There's been a lot of work into it. And uh, I think when you're in a pit, to climb your way out the pit and come, and come out stronger because of it, I think is um, one of the, the beautiful things in our sport. And so, um, I want to see him rewarded for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you, guys.